What's going on, everybody? Uh, this is Cold Eastwood, and welcome to Xbox Newscast. This is a brand new podcast, and this is my first time streaming live on a show, and I decided to go all out and have a good time with two incredible guests. I've got Rich from Review Tech USA, a massive YouTube channel that covers gaming, tech, news, rumors, you name it. He's on the show with us today. I've also got Games Beats, Jeff Grubb, who has been hot in social media and writing online on their website about gaming news and leaks. And uh, welcome, guys, to the show. Thanks for having thanks. me on. Yeah, thanks for having us on, man. I appreciate it. This is fun. This is exci exciting, Colt. Yeah, it should be good. It should be good. I'm going to get some gameplay rolling here. Um, we'll we'll have some a smorgasbord of gameplay to uh, look at while we talk about the topics. But we'll start off with... Um, Rich, give us a quick history of how you got into this mess on YouTube and being online talking about this sort of thing, and give us a quick history. A lot of people know who you are, but let's hear it. Sure. Give the super Cliff Notes version. I got laid off from IBM in 2009. I uh, couldn't find a job to save my life, and when I was bored, I did YouTube videos, and it magically turned into something. <laughs> <laughs> so that's how I, I got here at a complete look, and I'm very grateful. So that's how it happened. So how long did it take for things to go from I'm making videos until, hey, this is going really well? Oh, God, yeah, because I never – the best I thought it was going to do is get me like a radio gig. I never thought YouTube in and itself would be anything. Uh, I got partnered in 2011, and I didn't see the potential of – being able to make a living doing this until 2013 so it took a long time yeah yeah okay yeah i've been watching you for quite a while so uh yeah i've kind of watched that go and you had changed formats and kind of built yourself <laughs> into what you've enjoyed doing so yeah welcome to the show jeff thanks Grubb. for having me what, what's the deal with you jeff I don't know. Who knows anymore? Uh, I I write about video games. I've been doing it. I got like I, I checked my LinkedIn uh, for the first time in a while today, and there was a bunch of well wishes from April saying, "Hey, nine years at Venture Beat," and I'm like, "It's been nine years." Uh, so yeah, I, I write for Venture Beat's Games Beat, uh, covering the business of games, but kind of just doing uh, basically writing whatever we want because we got a lot of freedom to do that. And it's uh, it, and it's kind of turned into something over the last you know year or so where. Uh, people recognize the byline, uh, and people recognize that the, the Twitter, uh, I tweet too much, but people, uh, come to it for, you know, some of the sarcasm, but a lot of the further, like the, the breaking news are kind of helping people, uh, suss out what's happening in terms of announcements and things like that. And that's been a lot of fun. It's been really great to sort of put that together and, uh, kind of just come at it from an angle of like, Hey, video games can be fun. I want to have fun with it. Uh, what, what, what can I do to make those things work together? And it's, uh, it's been great. It's been kind of really taken off. Yeah, it has. Do you think? Uh, do you think people are enjoying the hobby of gaming right now? You know, <laughs> I think that people have a lot of anxieties about spending a lot of money on gaming, and that makes it difficult for them early on in a generation of consoles. Especially, uh, you spend a lot of money telling yourself that this is going to be a really great thing that you're going to buy, and when you invest that much uh, of like you know your personal finances, but also like what you imagine your future could be, it creates this sense of anxiety about like making sure that investment's going to pay off. So right now, I think. Uh, People are a bit high strung in terms of any bad news about their platform really rubs them the wrong way. But when they do go to play the games, I think people do seem to be realizing that these are, this is very good hardware from both PlayStation and from so or from uh, Microsoft. And, uh, and for the most part, when people sit down to actually get those controllers in their hand, they are having a good time. So I, I know I am. Yeah. Ten tensions are high because it's an expensive hobby. When you look at it, like <laughs> yeah. we, we spend a lot of money on the hardware and then, um, you know, and then you you add to that that it's difficult to get the hardware, get it, get the hardware for PCs or consoles, which we'll get into a little bit. Um, I've got a couple super chats. I want uh, Game on Daily says sauce. Uh, they're a pretty hey, crazy channel. <laughs> got get gas behind the scenes there. Uh, I'll kind of keep keep up with those as we go. But um, let's start by talking about Resident Evil Village. Everyone's uh, been buzzing about this new game capcom makes some dang good games so rich what's going on with resident evil village um they are actually something interesting came out today that a film director and usually i <clears throat> excuse me i brush these off because everyone's like oh hey that's my intellectual property I, like i brought up in my video today the actor who played carlton in the fresh prince of bel-air um, tried to go after Fortnite for using his dance and nothing came oh, of it. Right. So a lot of times I just laugh him off. However, um, if you 
look at the the actor of course slipping my mind right now but if you look at the director's name for this film and you look at his images and resident evil's images even i was like "Ooh, maybe this guy has a case <laughs> like it was it, it was just the i the art i how identical it was was even too much for me now i know ip cases are tough to hold up in court but man man that he may have a hell of a case out of anyone I've seen with this. Okay. Uh, have you had a chance to play Resident Evil Village? Yes, I did. Um, it, it's Gameplay wise, it feels similar to 7. Um, I do like the atmosphere better though. I think the setting is much more interesting than the Resident Evil 7. Yeah, yeah it's pretty cool. How about you, Jeff? What are you uh, hearing or what are you experiencing so far? Yeah, I just went uh, hands-on with it a little bit. Um, uh, I was actually streaming it from my PC to my phone the other night, and I, I was still surprised. Like, it looks really good. It's a really good-looking game. Uh, that that RE engine, which apparently doesn't stand for Resident Evil engine, stands for <laughs> Reach for the Moon Engine Engine. Um, which really? Is baff- yes, really. I thought no, that was a no, joke, no, of course, by the not way. Really? But, like, <laughs> Capcom says that's what it is. Capcom claims that's what it really is, but we all know it's Resident Evil engine. They're lying to us and they think they're going to get away with it. And I'm not going to let them get away with it. Um, it's, I, I don't know. The game looks gorgeous. I, I'm uh, I'm into it from that from that standpoint. Uh, I'm a bit of a coward, so I didn't play Resident Evil 7, uh, but I'm into what they're doing with Resident Evil 8. And I, I, I like the big lady. I'll admit it. I, I think, you know, I know it's, it's played <laughs> out, but I like the big lady. I want to go see what's going on with her in her house. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely going to at least play that much of the game. Uh, but I'm, I'm, you know, I, I only just Mike did the review for us at Gamesbeat, so I didn't feel the pressure oh. to like get, get it right away. So I'm, I'm just gonna play it at my leisure. Yeah, yeah, I've uh, put about an hour and a half into it. It's got that um, feel where you've got you've got first person combat, but it's mostly like puzzle. Get through the area, find out, get unlock doors, and turn statue arms and th- different things like that. Like they've done in Resident Evil Two and Three. Those remakes are pretty great. So yeah, it's good to see Capcom making really cool looking games. But there's another one that people have been asking for for a long time that finally is coming out. We've got Mass Effect Legendary Edition remastered ported PC version onto console. <laughs> so Rich, what are, uh, what's your thoughts on Mass Effect? Are you already done with it? Are you excited? I I've never been a big fan of the Mass Effect series and what took even more wind out of my sails. I didn't realize this initially is that it's just going to be backwards compatible on the next gen console. So it's they're really remastering them for eighth gen hardware, not even the newer hardware. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, Dovakin in the super chat says rich tomorrow. I'm an expat now. Let's get into it. People, people ride you on that in the comment section. Pretty good. Uh, the rich tomorrow. The rich tomorrow yep. meme out of all the memes with me has had the most likes. I'm actually very impressed. That one's yeah. lasted longer than the two hundred dollar meme. <laughs> yeah, I, I see it. Uh, I see it every single time. Well, I try to. Sometimes I try to see what people are actually saying about your video. It happens every time that I try to see what actually people are reacting to your video, and they've got rich tomorrow jokes for scrolls and scrolls and scrolls yeah so, just for a few pages <laughs> yeah uh jeff are you picking up mass effect legendary edition oh yeah 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 uh i i, I think well i think we had a few codes but i think i'm i'm on our, i'm getting it on steam as well uh I'll, I'll probably i think i got a code for xbox and i'll be trying it there i i, I love mass effect i love i've loved those games when they came out i actually when mass effect 2 came out it's when i got into the series went back and played mass effect 1 and then waited for mass effect 3 and i uh I enjoyed three, so yeah, I, re- I really want, kind of want to see what's what's going on with these games. Um, I mean, 120 hertz for, uh, support on Xbox is really really cool, so I definitely want to check that out. Um, but mostly, I just I want to get back in that world. I like that world. I like those characters a lot. I mm-hmm. want to go back to the Citadel and kind of pine for a Citadel based game of like actually just playing as a cop on that station. That'd be really cool. Um, but yeah, I, I'm I'm really looking forward to playing through these games again. I. I I, I, you know, I got the, the two kids running around. You might be able to hear them. I, I, I this would be oh, better for me on switch. I can relate. It'd be better, <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 It'd be better for me on switch if I had it like handout so I could like actually like run around and like put one of the kids on the potty and actually play it for a second and stuff like that. But uh, for mass effect, I'll make, I'll make an exception, try to get some TV time in to actually, yeah, I mean, it it's happen. a 40 hour game each playthrough you do. Yep. So, uh, achievement says glad to see three of my favorite content creators together for podcasts. Jeff, put your hair in the wind and rich take off your shirt. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was, they were like is rich gonna take off his shirt on cold east what's night i'm like guys come on now yeah that's great <laughs> don't want to blind your audience too yeah i mean somebody's willing to put up nick beckman said he'll he'll put up 50 dollars for shirtless rich but yeah we'll, we'll maybe we'll save that for later when he's had a uh, longer a better time here but uh 
Yeah, so um, yeah, my my only concern about Mass Effect Legendary Edition is it's uh, the PC version brought to console, pretty much. They've done a couple lighting changes, but it'll be nice to play that thing at sixty. And and uh, let's talk for a second about the back and pat situation. That's what's happening with um, Mass Effect Legendary Edition. It runs at one hundred twenty FPS on the Xbox Series X, but not on the PlayStation Five, even though the hardware is very very similar. Rich, do you know what's going on and why? Some people do. I uh, I read the explanation when I did the video on it. It's because the smart delivery with Microsoft is just easier for developers to work with than what Sony's working with because the hardware on the PlayStation Five could do 120, no problem with mm -hmm. the Mass Effect tr the Mass Effect trilogy. It's just at developers, it, it Microsoft made it easier for them to enable features like that. It's really just that simple. Where Sony, there's more hoops that you have to go through to to enable features like 120 FPS. Yeah, yeah, you have to you have to actually just build the native version for PS5 if you want that because the PS4 APIs just don't permit it. They don't permit 120 frames per second output, and so if you build a game for for PS4 like Mass Effect is um, the, that you're stuck with those limitations. And Microsoft weirdly or really smartly kind of predicted that things going in this direction and foresaw that there would be at least a year or two where, where there would be a lot of games where even if they even in your head they're like that would make sense to be a native next-gen game uh right. and especially like live service games uh the developers didn't want to do the time it would take to actually make those native versions especially when the only benefits are like really small things here and there like 120 hertz support which is cool but it's, it's going to serve a very small audience and so doing all right. that work just for that doesn't make a lot of sense and we see developers making those choices and I don't blame them. It, it, it stinks, but this is a problem that will go away over time for PlayStation 5. It's just nice that, at, for, at least for one of the consoles, it's not a problem right now. Right. It, it'll only be a year or so that we see a right. game be cross-gen, and they're trying to exactly. get their way out of that. But it, it sort of happens in a in a nice uh, coincidence that a lot of people can't get a P PlayStation 5 or an Xbox Series console because of the limitations from manufacturing. So it's kind of nice that you can still get these games supported on the old consoles and the new ones. And that's something that came up today. Um, we assume that if you wanted a PlayStation 5 or an Xbox console, if you wanted to go and just buy one at Walmart, or Target, or just order one on Amazon, no problem, without fighting off the, like, the internet demons, that uh, that would be over sometime in the summer or the fall. But Rich, what are we hearing now? Today? Mid-2022. Mid 2022, they're saying that they're that's. I was hoping and thinking just like you said as well that they, by, by the spring, maybe midsummer at worst, that we would start seeing the store shelves filled. But the semiconductor shortage is affecting everything from automobiles to game consoles to computers, and they they don't. There's just no remedy. They they can't produce something if the components aren't there to produce it with and that's the situation that we're in right now so things aren't going to change for about another year oh my gosh yeah, yeah. uh nano polymus says i'm a little bit late but i was trying to play through little nightmares I want to say huge, huge congratulations on your new show wish you the best he's a good good friend i've talked to a lot uh latuya says latuya too says so excited to see you guys together rich i'm so much excited <laughs> <laughs> that's from the xbox reveal that that guy said that <laughs> i'm so much excited <laughs> i gotta get that uh, from my soundboard yeah and so like you've got all those problems that you just explained about the consoles being difficult to get out into people and then everyone just compounded onto that that they are they're they've got scripts and bots picking them up before anybody else can buy them it just made a horrible situation even worse so and, and you have coronavirus which is making for, for less manufacturing and on top of it there's more of a demand for technology like that because more people are working from home whether it be for productivity or for entertainment people are buying ipads and laptops and game consoles because they just need to work from home and they're bored so it's like the so perfect they can play play a game during uh when they're not in a team's meeting for work right yeah basically yeah. <laughs> literally like that's exactly what's happening yeah uh, that, Jeff, uh, I, I, yeah i was just gonna say i was I'm, I'm not surprised that by this at all i think when um i think tsmc the manufacturer that does like the manufacturing of these processors for many many different companies uh said a few months ago that they weren't expecting this to lighten up until 2022 and uh and really even when it does uh, even like when they say like lightens up when even when they can like get their capacity back and, and get to a point where they're meeting some sort of demand the demand is still going to be like historically high so they're just not gonna and i think sony said as much like 
even once we get past sort of some manufacturing woes and TSMC figures out its stuff with all the other, like, uh, you know, lower profit margin parts, which is really what the issue is. But once it figures that stuff out, even if they do give more capacity to Sony and Microsoft and all these other companies, um, there's just so many more people wanting to buy consoles these days. So it's it's going to take some time. And, 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 you know, we say that and we say like, oh, people aren't able to get it's like way worse than it ever has been. You know, they sold 7.8 million PS5s. I think they said they, they shipped that many. And uh, oh, at yeah, this point, sure. yeah. this point, they had sold, they had shipped like 7.6 million uh, for the PS4. And so it's like, the, there are more, but I think the one of the other problems that we don't talk about is their launches were much more global than they were back in like 2013 for the PS4 and the Xbox for One. For Xbox especially. Yeah, yeah. Xbox One especially. Uh, that, that was in like a few countries. Xbox Series X and S is in a ton of countries. And so uh, when they're, they're spreading kind of the same amount of consoles over much more of the world, and that's causing issues as well. Yeah, it is. Um uh, Eternal Shot Eye says, really great panel here to support Colt. Can't wait for the future of his channel. Rich, where is Carlos the Chicken? Carlos the Chicken is at home right now being finger licking as always. So, <laughs> Yet another thing that you brought to your channel that just takes off, uh, even though that can't fly. Uh, Scott McGee says, Colt, you're a natural podcast host. Yeah, I'm faking it, but congrats on your new show. Loving this first one so far. Uh, that, that actually brings us right into, um, you guys book into that great because uh, the next thing is Sony has a, a Taiwan source has explained that Sony may go in and reduce the size of the silicon to ease yep. manufacturing. And we all have some assumptions of how this will work. And it seems uh, like it's uh, going to happen. Rich, what have you heard about this? Are you an expert on this? This is pretty techie. Yeah, I actually heard about about this too. And Jeff, you may know more about this than me. Is that Sony? First off, for everyone out there who has a PlayStation Five in the audience right now, don't lose a wink of sleep over this. I'm sure, like Ooh. I said, Jeff and Cole could back me back me up on this. Is that it's not a hardware revision where you're gonna you're missing out on a benefit or a feature. It's just they're trying to make it easier to manufacture so they could get more out the door so they could meet numbers and maybe make the console run cooler too. Um, what I heard is they're going tr over to some six nanometer process and they're going to try to make manufacturing more efficient, maybe by changing out some components or consolidating them so they can get more out the door. So yeah. it'll be interesting to see if they can. And like I said, anyone who bought a console, don't worry about it. It's not, it's just an internal change that you'll never notice a difference in performance. Right, and they, right. they're not going to change the external look of it, and so no. like, even that you're Darn. not going to have FOMO from that. Exactly, yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. This this makes a ton of sense. I think. I mean, uh, even when uh, they started the, the, the on on the uh, seven nanometer part, um, TSMC was already working with Apple on five nanometer, and a Apple was like, "We're claiming that for ourselves. Whatever we have to pay, we're taking that. We're making our own Apple chips, the M1 chip on the five nanometer." And um, and so there, there, there was like a space in between and it sounds like that's what exactly what TSMC is going to use and be like, hey, there, we have this other process. We can get you on there. It'll be slightly more power, for, power efficient. You'll be able to make the console. Uh, you'll, you'll be able to get more chips on a wafer, stuff like, like stuff like that. And that'll mm -hmm. lower costs for you, which is important for Sony because right now the PS5 is, is costing quite a bit of money compared to what they're selling it for, um, which just makes sense. That's normal. But what what is also normal is this. We saw it with the switch the switch got a revision as well it moved down to uh, moved down a process size as well and uh they released that as a better battery life switch and the switch light and uh you will probably won't get a ps5 light right now uh but you will get that revised one if it if it ran on battery it would last longer but obviously it doesn't run on battery so you might get like lower <laughs> fan speed or something like that but who's complaining about the fan speed in the ps5 right now this is mostly about cost saving for yeah you're i don't you're it, not only, it only benefit it only benefits sony that's what it and it benefits yeah. hopefully people by getting more consoles in their hands that's it yeah and, and it like like you know future price cuts way down the line it, it speeds up that process but yeah, again, like right now, everyone's just willing to buy for $500. So it's, yeah, this is mostly about Sony saving money. I mean, aren't they saving on silicon too? Like if they come down a nanometer, they're, they're, they can make this many more chips. Yes, that, exactly. That, yeah, exactly. They, they put this out on, the, on yeah. these huge wafers. And if you get fit, fit more on the wafer, you know, the price you're paying for wafer, and they probably, probably with this, this if TSMC is already moving them to six nanometer, it's probably because TSMC feels comfortable saying, we're going to get you the same yield as we're, we were getting you before mm -hmm. and, or better, uh, which has been also been a problem, I think, for all of these companies. It's kind of like low yields or, or you know, compared, like relatively speaking. And so, yeah, they're going to just save money in a bunch of different ways. And that'll have its benefits for gamers, but mostly in ways you won't see. 
Yeah, the pressure is immense in in the entire gaming industry from manufacturing all the way down to the customer bringing home the console. It's gaming's never been bigger. And before the console even came out, you couldn't buy uh the the current console, you couldn't buy an Xbox One or PS4. They were sold out everywhere. Uh it's been crazy. Uh Underachiever says, Congrats to Colton's debut podcast. Already awesome. Excellent first panel with Jeff and Rich. What is the panel's thoughts? Question for you guys. For gamers debating a mid-tier gaming PC versus next-gen consoles, what's the best overall value right now? Ooh, oh. I, it's a layered question, but as a person who prefers PC gaming, I would say right now you can. there is no way in hell that you are building a gaming PC that's as capable as any of the three offerings from Sony and Microsoft, whether you buy the PS5 or the discless one, they're both the same spec, or a Series X or S, especially the S, you are not building a PC with the specs that it has inside of it for $299. The graphics card alone would cost you that much to have a ray tracing capable graphics card. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, then you could go into that software can be cheaper on PC significantly, but right now to get a piece of hardware that you don't need to worry about building that you could just plop under your TV either of the next gen console for Sony or, or Microsoft or at least from a 2D perspective a, a better value at the moment that'll obviously change over time as you know the hardware ages but right now you're not building a PC as capable as them for the price yeah right, I, I agree yeah I agree I, I think um you, really you, you can't go wrong is the good news here if you if you have uh, you know a bug up your butt about getting them like one of these things uh, you know a graphics card uh, one of the consoles. If you if you end up being able to find one, you're going to end up pretty happy because they're all really good right now. Is kind of the, the the you know the short version of it. I say like even like going out and getting like a gaming laptop right now is really good. Gaming laptops got really good in the last couple of years, and they're kind of mm -hmm. hitting their oh, yeah. stride really hard right now. So uh, you just you can't go wrong, and I, I think that's that's awesome. The the hard part is now you can't find them, of course, but but still, once you do, you should be pretty happy with what you end up with. It isn't. Uh, Oh, I'm sorry to mean to cut you off. My apologies. I'll actually say one other thing too. You're almost better off buying a pre-built right now because yes. of the oh, astronomical yes. prices of the individual components at the moment. My apologies for cutting. That, you no, off. that's exactly what I was going to say. Yeah, <laughs> you're, you're, you go. yes, yeah. You're you're in the same boat. Uh, if you want to get a PC, like just trying to buy a graphics card, you might as well try and buy a PlayStation Five. It's that obnoxious right now. Uh, I, I should say real quick. I, I was thinking about this when we were talking about hard to get consoles um were you both you gentlemen able to get yours uh on pre-order because i jumped on the very first night or very first morning to get the xbox and the ps5 like i got you know some of the people waited like oh, i'll wait till they're in the stores or i'll wait until the craze went down for two weeks and they were you know out of luck what did you guys end up doing I, I shout out to my editor over at jkb he, he, he's my editor he's awesome. he has a YouTube, youtube channel he I, would, there was the Sony announcement and they were like, I think it was supposed to be September 17th, right? And yes. I'm like, all right, I'll wake up the pre-order in September. Walmart was like, yeah, we don't care. We're starting that we're Walmart. We're, <laughs> yeah. What is Sony going to do to us? We're going to do it the day before. I was out taking a walk and thank God I had my phone on me because my editor's like, dude, they have Walmart is already has pre-orders right now. And I don't think anyone knows, like right now on your phone, stop walking. And that's how I got the PS5, and he helped me out with the uh, and my audience. Actually, I should say too, as well, helped me get the Series X. So I luckily the first time around, I was able to get them, and I didn't think I was going to be able to. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, I um, let's see. I think when that the, that happened with Walmart, I was out getting Little Caesars pizza, and I was driving in my car, <laughs> and I remember I saw all the tweets. And I was like, oh, oh, oh. And so I got home. And I'm also, but also like in the back of my mind, whenever something like that happens, I'm like, there's a chance that work is going to get a couple and they'll just send me one. And, and, um, and that, that did happen with the, with the Xbox. We got one pretty early and they, they sent it to me. And then, uh, we got two PlayStation fives, but I already had the Xbox. So they sent the PlayStation fives to Mike and Dean. And so, uh, when I was trying to get a PS five, I, I was like, I was trying to get whenever they would pop up, but I'm not good at that. I got, I got the ADHD. I, I got, a. I'm, I'm distracted easily. I give up easily if the if the website doesn't work on the first try. And so oh, yeah. um, I, it's a friend was like, hey, I'm I'm like good at this. Uh, I'm helping everybody get one. Do you if I am able to get one? Do you want one? I'm like, yeah, a PS5 uh, digital edition. Absolutely. And he, he oh, yeah, a few, yeah, sure. few, a few weeks later. Yeah, uh, he he hit me up on Discord. And he's like, I got it. What's your address? I'll send it right to you. And uh, that that worked out fine. But uh, my the xbox series x that i got i i did i gave it to my nephew for christmas because i'm like i'll just buy my own 
you have this one uh, and, and I'll be able to replace the one for work and I still haven't been able to replace it, which is a problem for work. <laughs> I need to be able to replace that eventually. Uh, yeah. But so if anyone has ones that they want to sell me, help me out here. I'll totally yeah, still buy sure. one. It's still it's still every time I, I, it pops up, you know, Wario 64. I still oh, yeah. try, but it, I, it never works for me. I'm I, again, just maybe it's I'm too lazy. It's probably actually what it yeah, is. Yeah, they dropped it uh, like 5 p.m. Uh, Pacific time for me. And I tried, couldn't get in. And then I was uh, on Xbox Live chat playing games with friends and they're like they're they're on they're up again because it went it went on like every hour for that first night so i grabbed mm -hmm. my ps5 at like 1 30 in the morning and i'm like oh i got the disc version i didn't want to spend the extra 100 bucks but maybe i'll hold on to it and then of course it became impossible uh gaz says sony charging for crossplay surely this is pretty indefensible yeah jeff i will give you my kidneys for that ps5 controller you licked <laughs> uh, it's, it's it's going in the moma man they already asked me for it so yeah it's a museum of modern art right there sorry ben. yeah yeah we should we, we should talk about that real quick but maybe you're you're over it uh randall thor says super proud of my buddy cold eastwood for finally doing a podcast question is for the amazing panel hi jeff said the coalition <laughs> said that multiple projects in the works for the future what would you guys like to see from the coalition besides gears yeah, uh, so I was going to put this in my, uh, my my show tomorrow, the Game Mess show, but I guess we could just talk about it here real quick. Uh, when they posted, I kind of like sniffed around after they posted that blog today saying that they're work they're moving to the Unreal Engine 5 and they're going to be, um, it's, so it's going to be a while before they announce their games. I had heard that they are already working on another game other than Gears and they're helping with Halo, of course. Uh, and But it turns out that other game is exactly kind of what the blog makes it sound like. It is them getting used to Unreal Engine 5 it's an experiment to mess around with Unreal Engine 5. It's going to be smaller. It'll still take some time, but it's going to be kind of like the small offshoot from like that doesn't involve gears necessarily, but a way for them to like get accustomed to this this new uh, tool set that they're going to be working with, um, which is kind of, I think, what Microsoft wants from Coalition, right? This is supposed to be their Unreal Engine experts. Let them go mess around with that, come up with something neat, and then, uh, and, and then turn that into a game and then get back to gears, kind of. And if it, that game turns into something cool, Maybe more could happen there in the future, or they can keep experimenting and prototyping like this. And uh, but yeah, mostly it's yeah. about getting used to to Unreal Engine. I'm Rich, are you a big fan of uh, Coalition, or do you care about what's going on with Unreal Engine Five? I'm more excited to see. I mean, uh, Gears Five. I enjoyed some of the multiplayer. I I think it's a pretty. So I actually like it better than Gears Four. Um, I'm interested to see what they do with Unreal Engine 5, though, because whether no matter what resolution they show the demo running off at it, that looked next gen, the lighting looked next gen, the environment looked next gen. And I forgot the features that they mentioned, but it, it that would feel like if that, if I popped a game like that in one of my consoles or on PC, it'd be like, oh, wow, we're finally seeing what the hardware is capable of. So what they even if it's a smaller project just to play with the engine and maybe test out what may be a bigger IP in the future, that has a lot of potential all around. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Sipintain said a version of Steam on Xbox Series X. We hear this a lot. Uh, he says Steambox died, Xbox is Game Pass. They have UA, EA Play and possibly Ubisoft's Uplay coming to Game Pass. That's a rumor. Uh, maybe Steam is an index versus PSVR 2. Uh, what do you guys think about this idea of Xbox having Steam in their ecosystem? You I don't see it. I don't think it's viable. I, yeah. I, 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 that they want you in their ecosystem on PC, not the other way around. They see Steam as a competitor, mm -hmm. you know. Whereas the idea of having like Xbox Game Pass on the Switch, I could be, it, it isn't happening, but I could believe them doing that because the Switch is not a competitor. So I, I just don't see um, Steam in its like. There's a lot of people that were hoping for that. I'm like also too that even though Microsoft lets their you know, f first party IPs now or second party IPs as well go onto PC right away. They still want something to d differentiate their consoles and it, letting Steam on there, it just kind of would make the Xbox series consoles become messy for lack of a better term. So no, yeah. I just don't think that makes sense for them to bring Steam over to PC or to yeah. the Xbox. Yeah, I agree. I don't feel that there's not a lot of motivation there for, for everyone to make that one work. It's not, um, you know, it, the, the the difference between like competition and collaboration is is you know they can flip back and forth any any day of the week depending on how these companies are feeling but collaboration 
over competition is a thing that is clearly happening more and more in video games, even when Sony does charge for crossplay. But but in a lot of cases, like they're, they're finding reasons to collaborate. Uh, but that doesn't uh, that's not going to cross every border. That's not going to undo every sort of like just base level incentive of understanding, like, you know, why you want your platform on your console exclusively. Um, whether or not yeah. that turns into some other thing like where we see we see, we see um, you know, I guess Steam uh, libraries for VR end up on the console. Uh, I guess, but Microsoft's not that interested in making that work themselves. So uh, I doubt that they'll, they'll, they'll just let Steam come in and put Steam VR on console. So yeah, I'm skeptical. Yeah, you, but you know, we've seen some of Xbox's newest, biggest exclusives go to Steam, like Gears 5 and Forza Horizon 4. There's like this push and pull. Uh, it seems like Xbox does this giving and like... Like they talk about, hey, what if we put Game Pass on the Nintendo Switch and Nintendo fans get angry and say, we want Mario and Zelda, uh, but it doesn't work that way. Uh, do you guys have an opinion on how that all uh, happens? Yeah, it, it, it just it happens because, uh, yes, w when someone looks at the bottom line and they realize where they make their money and it's and it's a place like, OK, well, we're, we're trying to shift the way the whole industry works. And so we're, we're trying to shift everybody to Game Pass. And then, uh, you know, in the meantime, there, there is this huge audience of hardcore gamers that still consume games in this very specific way. Um, we could just say, we could try to force them onto our thing, or we could just include them in the way that they're used to. And if they decide one day to move over uh, because we make the deal so good, uh, that seems mm -hmm. to be, that seems to work better. It is the anti Don Matrick approach of saying, Hey, uh, you know, we are going all digital. You're, you're going to have to be connected. You're going to have to deal with it because we're Xbox and we say so, uh, as opposed to what seems to be the Phil Spencer approach of kind of just, lead us alone uh, along with like the carrot instead of the stick and uh we'll we'll, we'll find yeah. ourselves there eventually and it seems to be working yeah like xbox can be everywhere as long as you're one of our customers it's it's yep. exactly it destroys the the fierce uh and vile uh console war arguments you know where people think that console sales have to be the, the be all end all and that uh how many games are sold, which we'll actually get into in a minute. But I want to thank uh, over 1,100 people live uh, on the show uh, in the chat talking. Hopefully everything's working right. I get a couple uh, hiccups here, but I'm doing the best I can. My internet actually runs off of a steam-powered uh, look two-stroke motor, too. Yeah. No, but we're <laughs> <laughs> we're having a good time here. Uh, Kid Smooth said in the super chat, hey, Jeff, I've got one to sell you. So maybe he wants to, he might be serious. So you might want to hit him up on Twitter. Hey, it's, hey yeah, yeah. Get, get my DMs on Twitter. My DMs are open. Uh, yeah, let me know. Uh, that'd be great. Um, uh, John Gale says, congrats on the new show. Are we getting Battlefield trailer this week? There's Here's too, too many more. We're supposed to, I think, right? It, it seemed uh, like there was a uh, Battlefield 6 tease on the way. I think, so I, it sounds like they might do something a bit staggered. If They might tease it this week. That sounds right. It, it, I think the um, the real trailer reveal is june 1st uh and oh. it is what i've heard last um That's and i think forever. uh yeah it feels like forever it really does so i i wouldn't be surprised if they find a way to tease it but um like andy mcnamara um former game and former eic was on twitter today he now is at ea he's like people seem mad at me because we're kind of implying june they're like june rhymes with soon and a few weeks ago they said the battlefield trailer will be dropping soon um and so <laughs> yeah right exactly yeah, they're, and yeah. So people are getting frustrated people Wind are like talkers, what, what the hell yeah, yeah the june's really far away uh but it just it, to me it sounds like they originally planned to do early may i had heard early may a few weeks ago and it just sounds like uh maybe things didn't quite come together and so they're taking a few more weeks and now june 1st seems to be the big day uh that, I, if there's something before then i don't know for sure yeah that is a thing please give these developers uh time and quit trying to rush them because they're they're going through a mess. Poochie says, well, uh, what's up, Jeff and Rich? And Matt McDonald Media says, thoughts on Everwild from Rare. There's there's nothing really to say, but he says, I know there's not much information, but your best game, guess on what the game actually is going to be. Uh, Rich, have you watched Everwild's like small, teeny development? And Yeah, and it, it's amazing that rare in a way is still a thing because they have not i know they they were behind sea of thieves I'm, I'm correct about that that just popped into my head right now they were the developers behind that mm -hmm. um okay i wanted to make sure i wasn't half asleep at the wheel with that but it just seems like rare uh when they joined microsoft i just feel like they haven't been up to the legendary standard that they were known as under nintendo i don't know whether if that's uh 
Microsoft not let you know taking away the the wheel from them, or they just lost focus. I know I know some of the original Rare developers left, but I would I would like to see an IP from them, whether that peaks my interest again because the last time they had my interest peak was like 1999 so do you think that that rare i i have this opinion but do you think rare is sort of they made those quirky really interesting games back in the 90s and they still kind of do that same method but it doesn't really translate to modern gaming even though sea of thieves found a big audience as it developed but it wasn't my type of game i've yeah. tried to give it a shot several times i never tell people that it's the game of the year, you know, I, I've tried it. It does some interesting things, but what are your thoughts on, like you said, rare did great things in the nineties. What do you think about now? Like, well, if you look, they had their triple a games and I don't think it was just like, if you look at golden eye, um, perfect arc, even in Donkey Kong country series at the time, I mean, platformers were mainstream back then. Mm -hmm. So they had those mainstream games and they tried, if you remember when the 360 first dropped, they tried to do that with perfect arc zero, I believe was the name of it. And yep from a technical standpoint, I actually booted that up on my Xbox series X, man, it's a good looking game for 2005, but man, it's boring as hell for 2005 <laughs> or now. So, yeah. you know, I feel like the talent from rare generally has been wasted and they did have the ability to make obviously from their track record, a solid triple a game, but I don't know whether it's rare or Microsoft that let that slip by. It'll be interesting to see if they could come back with something that peaks people's interest in rare like it used to be yeah jeff what do you think ever do you think it's going to be cool well actually uh rich and i didn't answer but what do you think it is that'll that'll uh, round that out yeah that so i i have no idea what i what to think it is uh, it, it seems like uh, you know their creative director left right so it's it could turn into anything so any idea i feel like i come up with would just be a wasted thought and i'm just doing that to throw oh, it yes. away when they turn it into something different a little bit down the line i, I think the thing with rare is they want to be doing these experiments rather than uh, mining their, their, uh, but instead of doing what everyone else is doing and doing what they used to do. And so that means coming up with weird ideas and exploring them. And I, I, I think that's cool. Um, I do wish they would do another Viva Pinata. I think that would be a great fit for, for uh, yeah. game pass. I think it'd be a, a cool thing right now. It'd be different. It, it could, they could make it kind of the like position as their family game. It's never going to be Pokemon, but it doesn't have to be. Um, just kind of make one of those those games because I, I really love them quite a bit and I think they could uh yeah it could really fit is, in today yeah yeah Rare said they don't want to go back and rehash their old IPs they want to make new, new things so you've got Double Fine and Rare who want to just do their thing and uh, when you look at all the other studios uh, on Xbox they're making uh, they're not making Double Fine and Rare type games I want to uh, welcome Zen Zenner White to the channel membership. You, you get access to some of the uh, custom emojis that I drew, little cartoon uh, images of uh, Xbox characters. Those are pretty cool in the chat. And you got uh, the little emojis you can put up on the chat for fun and trolling. I don't know. Have a good time. But yeah, uh, so that's that's Everwild. That wasn't on the topic of the list, but uh, let's talk about uh, Sunset Overdrive 2. That was uh, something that came up. Uh, that's a game that didn't sell a whole bunch on the Xbox, but Which is now Insomniac. Yeah, you guys like that game, right? It was mm -hmm. good. I mean, I didn't finish it, but it was, what I played of it, I really enjoyed it. They also let it release on Steam on PC, too. And yeah, that was one of those, along with like uh, Titanfall 2, like great games that just got criminally overlooked for 8th Gen. Yeah, that's true. Jeff, have you played uh, all the way through that as a I, girl trying, in your I, th door? I think I might have reviewed it, and I'm like actually going to look right now. Uh, yeah, but I, I liked it a lot. I remember liking it quite a bit. Um, it was it, it's a good game. Um, I not I, you know any talk about like bringing it back is is interesting to me. I, I, I you know I think where this came from is there was word that Sony got the trademark again, right? They, they like nailed it down the trademark for Sunset Overdrive, which is an Insomniac Studios game, and they own Insomniac Studios now. So the line of thinking makes sense there, but uh. You know, Insomniac's pretty busy. Uh, we know they're definitely always oh, yeah. going to be making a Spider-Man game for quite some time. Like that's not that you know that at least one team's going to be doing that. Um, and and then they're, they're you know they're also the you know the Ratchet and Clank team. So it's like yep, uh, they got a lot on their plate. Uh, me so it's hard for me to like imagine like okay now they're also going to branch off and also do another Sunset Overdrive. But I guess you know th they'll be at a point where maybe they can make that decision here pretty soon. That'd be cool though. Yeah, so it sounds like it's a possibility that Sunset Overdrive will get remastered for the PS5, and I would think it'd be a high possibility. You guys can nod uh, in agreement or not, but I think it's a high possibility. That game would not come to the Xbox if it got remastered, <laughs> right? Yes. Yeah. Right, yes. So, 
Yeah, I, I, that's a that's a that's a fun game. So there's another cool thing. Uh, since Xbox gamers are waiting for new titles to release this uh, summer and this fall for exclusives, uh, there is FPS boost. Have you guys messed around with this? Yes, I have. Titanfall two at 120 FPS yes. in the Series X is awesome. It, yeah. Like I said before, it's a criminally underlooked game. If you get that, I would strongly recommend. I think it's part of uh, Game Pass if you have Game Pass. Yeah, um, that's how I think I. Got or it's it. like five bucks. If, yeah, uh, either way, it's <laughs> worth it. And if you have it on the Series X and playing it 120 FPS, even though it lowers down the resolution, it's still that's the way to play it. That yeah, the yeah. way that game was me- meant to be played. It's incredible. Yeah, it, it got to the point where uh, there's so many games now that I've stopped like looking for the one game I want to play to make me want to go play the Xbox. And I'm just like, I'm just going to go boot up the Xbox Series S that I still have that's hooked up to the TV over here and just pick some old games. And it's probably going to be FPS boost, probably. I mean, a lot of the games are the ones that are uh, the most played, it seems, uh, on Game Pass and, and stuff like that. And so, you know, get booting up Far Cry 5 or whatever and getting like a really solid 60 frames per second out of that. That's impressive. It's really cool. Um, and it, it's kind of how I want it to be, where it's like, I don't even really think about it. It's just, I know these games are going to be better than ever uh, on these new consoles, and uh, th- that's great. Yeah, I mean, they should be. You'd think, you know, we're in the 2000s. If you buy a new console, it should automatically boost the frame rate because the hardware can handle it, but yep. developers lock those games down. They fine-tune them, they tailor them to that console, and then they stay that way until they go back in there. Um, and talking to Jason Ronald about, you know, what they've done, Oh, thank goodness. I mean, PC gamers who are mostly on PC who play their multiplats there, like they've been doing this for mm-hmm. uh, you know a decade and a half. They've been mm-hmm. loading up any game at, at, at a decent resolution at 60, and I've done the same. But uh, it's pretty nice. I own so many games on Xbox. I played uh, Sleeping Dogs, Shadow Warrior 2, Dying Light, Dead Island, Far Cry 5, and uh, some other games, and just messed around for a while and kept playing. Uh, Poochie just joined the channel membership. Uh, um, let's see. Uh, Alvin, I had to read this in the guitar one. He said, I'm a Paul Reed Smith guy. That godlike Kramer is making me envious. Back here I have, which way is it? With a flipped, who, who knows? Back here I've got my uh, Eddie Van Halen guitar that I, I painted up with my brother. Uh, that's fun. To, you know, when you're not playing video games, you got to find a second hobby. Rich, you have a second hobby when you're not uh, inundating YouTube with uh, videos? Uh, children. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> hey, Rich. Well, right. I'm sorry. Well, I know we're not supposed to swear, but this man knows what I'm talking about. Yes, yep. yes. It, it, they take up, and um, I do a, the occasional music production stuff like that too. But between, oh yeah, you did some uh, some beats for some of your stuff. Uh, yeah, on your videos. Yeah, that's cool. I haven't done that. Jeff, what's your little side uh, hobby that you're doing to? No, oh, yeah, I gave sane? up all my side hobbies. Honestly, it's I remember like I had the, I had the first kid. And I'm like, ah, oh, this isn't too bad. I could still make this stuff work. And then the second kid is like, okay, well, I guess I'm never watching TV ever again. And I'm uh, like, <laughs> maybe I'll watch much. half a movie once a week or something like that. And I uh, try to read a book. I tried to read that uh, Ask a Wada book on my, I got uh, from a, for Christmas, I asked for a big bean bag so I could just chill and put it in the corner and read books. And of course the kids have claimed the bean bag for themselves. And I was trying to like read a book on it. They're just climbing over me the entire time. So I'm like, mm-hmm. uh, I'll, I'll listen to audio books while doing the dishes, I guess. I guess that's my hobby now. It's weird how as an adult, you, you start appreciating portable gaming again. Whereas oh, yes. when you're like in your twenties or late twenties, even you were like, ah, you know, it's childish. I have a console. Yeah, you get your I have first a PC. HDTV, yeah, and you're like, oh man, exactly. <laughs> I'm gonna sit five feet away from this thing. Yeah, exactly. And, and now when you have a, I ha- I have a one, three, and four year old laying all over you. It's nice to have a switch wow. or like that product mm-hmm. I have where it's the Aya Neo work it actually plays PC games decent, and you could play while you have children sleeping on you and drooling on you. So. <laughs> Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I've got, I've got a couple of kids, but they're a little bit older and kind of how I got, I could get into YouTube stuff. Now they're old enough to where I can say, get out of here. <laughs> get out of the room. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't work if they're my ages. So yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the two and four year old, I was like, yeah, yeah. I'm like, go up, you gotta go potty. Just go sit on the potty. And she's like, I don't know. You're going to take me. I'm like, no, you'll figure this out. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Also, uh, when they get old enough, you have to turn the volume down on games because they're dropping the F-bomb and you're, uh, yeah. you, know, you have to kind of mitigate Everything. that. Yeah, play Gears and you can turn off the swearing. Uh, Devario 2 became a channel member. Thank you. Uh, these guys all get early access to videos. They usually create a video uh, in the afternoon and then it goes up the next day so they get to watch it early. Um, let's see. We got... Um, so we talked about FPS Boost. That kind of brings up... Um, the Xbox has like 75, 120 FPS games, which is incredible. And a lot of those are on the Series S, which is a $300 machine. So that's pretty cool. But 
there's a disparate there's like an argument between the playstation guys and the xbox guys and this might be a fun little topic uh where you get more 120 fps games on the xbox than you do on the playstation so that's could become kind of an interesting uh priority for developers rich have you uh you've been messing around with 120 hertz display on your tv yeah i actually did a youtube video showing off how um i had a samsung 1080p 120 hertz monitor in the series s and yeah you couldn't get any setup with pc at that price point right now um as of this stream uh with that kind of setup and it, it's pretty incredible to and one of the nicer things is that microsoft and sony i'm sure will catch up with it is the oh, yeah. flexibility where if you have a 1440p monitor that's only hdmi 2.0 it's not hdmi 2.1 but it does 120 hertz plus you could still use that monitor in, in your, your series s and x can output 1080 or 1440p excuse me yeah that was yeah. that was a weird oversight with sony like there's a lot of people who have high refresh rate monitors 1440p that could have just used hdmi 2.0 i'm surprised they didn't support that from the get-go and they're using pretty similar tech in both platforms so um, it was just strange they just overlooked that because high refresh rate over resolution any day of the week with me well, did Sony assume that not a lot of games would run it at 120 because they they put things in the console that the, that the Xbox doesn't have? Like they've got a way better Wi-Fi setup, um, mm -hmm. the SSD is faster, you know. So, Jeff, what do you think about that? Yeah, you think I, it's a big deal? I, it's not a big deal. It's 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 cool. It's awesome. It's great that it works. I think that. Um, if it's something that if if you are the person that's like man i realize that high refresh rate matters to me but also i'm not willing to go spend a lot on on a pc I, I think what rich talked about about like you know getting a cheap 1080p monitor and doing that with an xbox series s uh, that's brilliant i think most people are, are are going to be like uh i'm still looking forward to like the massive games coming out for these consoles and when ratchet and clank comes out we're gonna hear about how like oh this is the best looking game ever made and, and mm -hmm. that's going to oh, be yeah. stuff that act people actually care about for for quite some time. Uh, it, it, it's you know I, I think even if, if you are like a PlayStation fan and you're like worried about this or it's something that's concerning to you, um, I, honestly that just goes back to that anxiety. Uh, you're going to get over this it's, once you start getting some more <laughs> of these games from next gen. You're it's going to pass and you're not even going to think about it ever again. Your uh, anxiety, games, yeah. yeah, your anxiety will pass. It's going to be okay. And, and the thing is, uh, the, the biggest thing here is is uh, Sony realizes how much is on the line and if these things start building in a in crescendo into a point where uh it feels like it, it turns into a big deal sony will directly respond to it they will spend the money to, to get people to shut up and say hey just be happy with the console you bought because they know how much money is on the line they're not going to mess up in any big ways this generation neither company is so uh if you made your investment in your console and you're not willing to invest in, in all the consoles and all the, all the PCs out there, um, I get that. And you, I would say, don't worry, things are going to work out just fine in a year or two. So yeah, just hold yeah, on and tight. be grateful. You're not at 30 FPS anymore. Yeah, exactly. Or, it's, it's or so sub 30. Better. Yeah. Yeah. The seventh the generation gen was like the 20 FPS generation. I'm sorry. Continue. No, no. I was just going to say this, this, like the last generation consoles were really kind of miserable looking in, in in retrospect now the ps4 yep. and the xbox one were kind of miserable machines and uh, we never should have been stuck at 30 frames per second with those those busted ass oh, hard yeah. drives in them for so long it was really bad and we are so lucky with these new hard they realized that people are going to spend a lot of money on games so they actually made good consoles this time they didn't know that last time so they didn't and this time they did and we should just be grateful yeah they weren't forward thinking i remember vividly watching your video uh rich you were playing Dying Light, and you were talking about how the um, oh, I forgot, I just blanked on what it's called. The Jaguar uh, cores, the AM. yeah, the Jaguar cores, and the I forgot garbage. What the, yeah, it was like, the memory the system. Netbook. I can't yeah. remember what it was called. You were talking, you were kind of breaking that news as it was coming to light, and you were playing Dying Light in your video. So I, I remember that by what little bit of a photographic memory I have. I remember because I decided to get an Xbox One, and I was like, this was this the right choice? and uh everything was running at 30 and the xbox was struggling to run up at 30 it was a lot of games ran at 27 28 i remember that when you reported on it and i was like oh no and we're just getting rolling so and a lot of developers too maybe jeff you maybe you've heard this it being directly in the industry we're saying that the, this the eighth generation was just like a polished seventh generation because yeah. the processors held them back because they couldn't do more with like destructible environments or ui or or the mpc the artificial intelligence because the c 
I think I heard this could be wrong that the cell processor in the PlayStation 3 was more powerful than the yes. CPUs both Correct. in the PS4 and Xbox. Than some, yeah, it really does. Yeah, absolutely. I, and I, that's I, ridiculous. I, yeah, I, I would echo. Yeah, that's what the developers were saying. And, and really, we we're like, okay, so gaming's going to kind of just be stuck in this rut for a while where we're just going to get better versions of old games. And that's not really what the case is going to be. It was the issue with the last generation because. We had these really slow CPUs that really couldn't handle. They were like made for netbooks, made for sort of mobile uh, PCs. And back then, that was that meant they were really bad to start the generation, <laughs> yeah. and they only got worse over th over time. Uh, they were seriously junky, and uh, developers didn't even try to push them because they're like, we're not going to be able to get anything out of this. We are not going to waste our time trying to make this hardware work for some new idea. We're just going to wait. And we're going to we're going to make what we know can that we can actually build on this on this tech budget that we have. And now we have seriously impressive actual next gen CPUs in these systems. And we should see developers really start to take advantage of that stuff here pretty soon with new ideas, actually the games that feel like new ideas with, with a lot more destructibility, a lot more complex environments with a lot of uh, more simulation. Uh, it's, mm -hmm. it's really exciting. Yeah. Yeah. But, it, it, yeah it will be. Go oh, ahead, sorry. Uh, yeah. For the guys who were just console only I mean, in the chat, the Zen two cores uh, that are inside both of the next gen consoles from Sony and Microsoft, you don't understand how big of a jump they are yes. <laughs> compared to what would the Jaguar cores that were in the eighth gen. So you're all I'm saying is that you're in for a treat because there's so much more computing power, at least on the CPU side from both offerings from Sony and Microsoft. Yeah, yeah. just play like Assassin's Creed Odyssey on your Xbox One or Xbox One X or PS4, whatever, on those, and then play Valhalla, and all of a sudden you've got high resolution, you've got high frame rates, it looks great. Yeah, You know, when you talk about how they're going to push everything forward and they have this new hardware to work with and they have to uh, become familiar with it, it makes me think about another game that they know how to work with that's coming up, but they're having a hard time getting this game ready for market, and there's been a little bit of controversy with Halo Infinite this week. Uh, they still haven't showed gameplay. Uh, Rich, have you reported on this? Not uh, that we had a developer speak up, and then he had to circle around. I'm covering this tomorrow in a video, but this is a good discussion. Hmm, that's interesting. No, I have not heard of I have not been in the loop recently anyway. I used to have an insider that worked there, but he left the company. Um, yeah, it, I still hold to the fact there is a pretty decent chance we may see another delay with Halo Infinite, and it may not even come out in 2021 at all. And I'll be honest with you, too, I would be okay with that because I'd rather have a game come out properly than be rushed. And mm -hmm. this is uh, ever, there's a lot lying re, that Microsoft and 343. This is like it. They need to have this work, or the the entire future of the Halo universe could be negatively affected uh, you know or you could be put on hold so they have they have this is a sink or swing moment for them so let them take all the time in the world with it yeah so jeff yeah. have you heard uh, about this developer who uh said something about how development was going while he was working there yeah i i, I was uh, watching a little bit and then he, yeah he backtracked and uh, no one reached out to him really when when he you know we made the statement in some video and some interview and it was uh or I think it was even like translated. So um, there was some stuff lost in translation. And, and basically he was saying, don't don't report it, report it in the way that it was portrayed on Reset Air or whatever. Um, and uh, yeah, that's a good idea. You probably should reach out to the guy before you do that stuff. Um, mm -hmm. I, I am, I, you know, I think we, we, when it comes to a game like this, they're just trying to make sure that it's fun. And uh, I think if you ever watched the... Uh, the documentary about God of War 2018, uh, they were really worried about that game until the last few weeks. They're like, this game is not fun. This game is is, is, <laughs> is a mess. And a lot of times that's how it goes, where the fun gets you know coalesced in the last few weeks when everything comes together and like, oh, okay, now the sound's all working and the music's all, it's playing in the background and it's all working in conjunction with one another and the game feels the way we always imagined it, imagined it could feel. And uh, when you don't reach that point for a long time, years and years and years of work, It'd be probably be pretty demoralizing, and you could start to doubt mm -hmm. yourself. And I think that's when they're they're still right in that that zone. Um, I think if they have a good showing at E three, if the game comes out at E three and people are happy with what they see, that will be the push they need to get it out to the end of this year. If they show at E three and it's just another chorus of this game is going to tank, this looks terrible. Uh, yeah, I, it's totally going to get delayed again. I think, but um, oh, it, man. It, it, yeah, it's it's all it's all going to come down to whether or not they 
whether or not they come out of that E3 showcase feeling positive about, about, about what they have. And I think that they've, they're have they working toward that. That's the point right now is they're, they're not showing any gameplay because they're waiting until E3 to show the gameplay. Uh, and so they have a goal of like when to have this stuff ready to show. So if they can get that together, uh, it, you know, they could just hit their, their stride until release. And then that would be great. Okay. Uh, so what Jeff is talking about is a developer said that, uh, he said something about crunch or working late hours and it, and he, and it was taken off on reset era. And he also said, um, that, uh, the game wouldn't be an epic masterpiece. And then when he got a, you know, a lot of articles were written about him, he made another video and tried to mitigate that disaster. So I kind of saw it from two points that he spoke freely and things weren't as horrible as he may have put out, but, um, <laughs> he had to backtrack on it to, uh, save possibly uh him from keeping himself employable because he worked at 343 and went on to do something else he'd worked there for eight years and he said he was happy there but people are very judgmental and uh pessimistic about uh halo infant aren't they that's yes. the crummy part yeah yes they are I, I don't think it's going to come out in 2022 i think it's still supposed to hit they've given it an entire year but uh yeah i mean with covid geez, who knows it's mess. Uh, let me. There, somebody said uh, Sour Blow Gaming, and that's an interesting name. In the chat, said he thinks that the uh, the Typhoon symbol uh, that is a, a partner's game for Xbox is possibly something from Embark Studios is making that Typhoon symbol a game. And I ca I can't think of what Embark Studios has worked on. Do you guys are you familiar with that team? I am not uh, familiar. I, I know the name. Yeah, I know the name, but I, like I was just thinking about them the other week, and now I can't remember what they worked on. Um, but no, it's it's not Embark. I can tell you that. <laughs> it's, yeah, that's not who yeah. that is. Uh, that Typhoon symbol is not Embark. Yeah. So yeah, that's something we'll hear about in maybe two or three years. But uh, yeah. So the the other part that comes out about the Halo about Halo Infinite is uh, people on social media have been banging the drum that Halo must be great. Halo must be great. Uh, guys, what do you think? Must it be great? Yeah, and it's a double. Here's the interesting thing: as much as I'm all about a game being delayed until it's done right, it's almost a double-edged sword for Microsoft and 343. Meaning that, okay, if it gets delayed, then the expectations go even higher. Okay, they bought, bought themselves more time to perfect the game and polish it and craft it and make sure the gameplay is up to snuff. But every time there's a delay. There is more pessimism, and on top of it, people have higher expectations. So it, it kind of is almost dangerous with that too. But so I hope, I hope though, that doesn't incentivize them to rush it because, I'm you know, most reasonable human beings will be okay with the product they get so long as it's a quality product. But there are a lot of people out there that that they would just keep on making their standard go higher and higher each time Halo Infinite gets delayed. Yeah, they already no. did that. They already rushed it and tried to get it out in November of last year. And boy, did they take <laughs> no. a beating for that. Jeff, is it going to be great? Uh, it's probably going to be pretty good. I, I imagine that after all this time, they have they probably have something that they feel pretty good about. But um, in terms of whether or not it has to be great, uh, you know, I, I think that when you get to a, it's, it's at a certain point, uh, the perception becomes reality and the perception is it has to be great. It has to be great or else everything's going to fall apart. And if that's the perception, it don't, it, well, it might as well be the reality because um, people are going to flip out and, and just completely dunk on it nonstop. It'll be a meme and, uh, and, and mm -hmm. you know, meme in every sense of the word where it'll just spread throughout the community uh, that Microsoft can't make great games. And uh, that could, that's poison to games, to game pass and to their business model and yeah. so all these and faith, all these acquisitions yeah. that they made uh, all these ex what's the point of all these ex acquisitions if you if we know you can't deliver on them in the end if they're just going to come out and be like a bunch of b games a bunch of 80s uh why do we why would we ever get excited about this stuff <laughs> a so, bunch of 80s I love yeah it. a bunch of 80s yeah exactly yeah like, no and that's well, what people, that's what people are going to think if it comes it, out it, and it's like an 80 it's that's still kind of coming up short i think in a lot of people's minds it's the EA effect. When they buy a studio, everyone's like, "Oh, come on!" You know, it's like <laughs> they just bought the they just bought the Dirt Studio. I forgot a Codemasters. Codemasters. Yeah. And every, everyone was they got getting they were getting review bombed on Steam. Because well, I mean, Codemasters. They're they're I love their games, and their games Dirt are always about yeah. They're all, they're always about an eighty something. They're always really great racing games. So, yeah, I I can see that. I, I also when I think about uh, three four three. 
the halo is their biggest franchise in the xbox catalog right so when i look at uh, Sony Santa Monica building God of War. That's one of the biggest franchises for PlayStation. So they had to deliver a really great game. They just couldn't follow the status quo. And so I think it's difficult for Xbox diehards <clears throat> to hear that because they they just want Halo to be fun. They want it to, to review well and, and come out not totally broken, right? But me, as someone who's been talking about Xbox for a while, I think that 343 has to knock it out of the park as far as going above and beyond what they did with Halo 5 for sure Absolutely. and what they did with Halo 4, which did really well for their first outing. So that's the way I look at it. I don't know if you guys... I mean, it's got to be a, a game of the year contender in the in those talks, right? I think it has to be. Um, I, I, or, or, or on the other hand, it has to have a multiplayer that is just so addicted, addictive and sticky um, that when people start talking about like, oh, I don't know if I love this game. There's just such a huge audience playing the free-to-play multiplayer that they don't even hear that and they're just enjoying the game. Uh, right. That's the way to, that's that the best way true. to maybe counteract any sort of talks about like- That's oh, most hey. gamers true. Uh, yeah, that don't- Right. That. <laughs> no, and, yeah. it, and it, but it's like, you know, these things still, still can spread through the community. And like, if, if you know, one night everyone's like, oh, you know, okay, it's just Halo. Let's just go back to Warzone. Uh, that stuff can have a, a negative long-term effect on the game, but um, yeah. if if it can counteract that, if it can keep an audience happy, uh, it, it will probably be able to get past any sorts of talk about like what the score was when it came out or whether it was a game yeah. of the year contender. Uh, but if it is a game of the year contender, none of this is a problem, and they're and they're golden. They could just keep moving forward with their plans as is, and um, uh, and I think that's what we're talking about. It's like avoiding these p p possible pitfalls. And the best way to do that is to make a great game. I guess uh, saying that it's, it's probably a lot easier said than done, but uh, you know, make a great game and you won't have any issues. Yeah, and it will be one of the biggest Halos to drop in a and probably over a decade. It's going to be on Steam. It'll be on Game Pass. It'll be on. Uh, windows pc store it'll be on xbox one it'll be on xbox series consoles like that's a big deal uh rich where are you going to play halo infinite are you going to go ahead and get it right on steam or I'll windows get it. Store? I'll, I'll, i'm going to do both i i always end up because i'm always interested to see the difference in performance too between the console and, and you know and, and to have something because i like the series s for its portability so it's nice to have something like that you could just plop under a tv just have the two cables with you and you're good to go um, what I think, too, is a kind of a side note. Um, I wonder if the original Xbox One hardware is also causing them issues, too, because we, we were just saying before those consoles were dogs when they first came out, let alone eight plus years later. So if they, I wonder to get a somewhat open world Halo game to run at 60 FPS on the 2013 Xbox One is a problem. On a new engine. Right yeah. yeah, on the new engine as well. Well, you know, a lot, uh, most of the development, you know, three or four years of the development was knowing it was going to launch on the Xbox One. They have that going for them, right? You can assume that it'll be okay uh, because they knew they were going to launch in the Xbox One, but that is a problem. They have to scale down. So you're looking at, uh, you know, on the Xbox One X, it's probably going to be a 1080p 60 game to make sure that it does that open world. Uh, that game has to look good because it, what we saw last year doesn't look nearly as good as even Halo 4 or Halo 5. Like those games look phenomenal even before they got enhanced. So the team knows how to do it. They just have to do it and deliver it from home, separated. I think, uh, I can't remember if we were off show or on show when we said this. Like these teams working from home, they can't just go over to their coworkers and gather mm -hmm. around a, a computer and, and look at what they're working on and, and concept stuff and troubleshoot. They have to do it over a Teams meeting or an email or a phone call, and that can really hamper things. Uh, this super chat is interesting. Uh, King2002 says, Jeff, is the Typhoon symbol for Avalanche Studios? Uh, no, no. No, no, no. The Typhoon symbol is not for Avalanche Studios. There you go. Okay, there's your answer. I thought you were going to plead the fifth or you were going to like change the subject. I said what I said, and I think it would pass in legal muster is, is how I feel about that. So, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I mean, uh, there. 
I'm just happy there's a, there's these games being built right now for the Xbox. Absolutely, it's That's fun. Sure. This is fun. Like, I'll, I mean, I I know that everyone's always worried about like, oh, where are the games? We've been saying this for for Xbox for forever. Where are the really big games? And it's like I I feel sort of bad for Microsoft to a certain extent because they did make all those acquisitions, but a lot of those acquisitions were companies already making games with like other publishers or had like mm-hmm. previous they had things they had to get done first. And they're only sort of now just getting past that hump so that those games can like start getting made just for Xbox. Like Double Fine's still working on Psychonauts 2, which has to come out for everything. So it's like, uh, yeah, I mean, I thought it was going to come out a year ago. Like, yeah, exactly. So we're still like well in that period where they have things on their plate. They have to get off before they really truly become 100% Microsoft companies. So, And they just got the, I mean, if you think about it for a game development cycle, they just got some of those studios 2018, 2019. Like they can't just magically pop out a game by 2021. That's triple A. So. Yeah, yeah, I've told people right. that a lot. Like, where are the games, Colt? I'm like, well, I don't know about you, but as an Xbox fan, I want first party games to take three to five years, not two years. That's not mm-hmm. what I'm asking for. I'm not asking for a, a quick jab. I want a great game. Uh, Uriel Delgado says, question about FPS Boost, if any of you guys know more about this. Was it ever confirmed if FPS Boost was coming to Xbox original and Xbox 360 games? Uh, Uriel is unsure. I have not I, I, heard about this. So I, I think uh, someone was asking uh, Jason Ronald about this recently, and I think he said they're trying to figure out if they can make it work with Xbox 360 games. The, oh, okay. Uh, the the issue is is that the you know the the DirectX API generation is is old enough that it's not just a flip of the switch at that point. I think um, at least not yet because you know they're pretty much working with the same stuff they're working with uh, now that they were working with on Xbox One, and so uh, when they just up- update the APIs or whatever, and then they and they need to make this stuff work, it, they 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 could predict how it's going to function. Uh, with Xbox 360, it's not exactly the same thing, so it's going to take a little bit more work, maybe on the platform side, and then if it requires more work for the developers, it's not really FPS boost anymore. So we'll have to see if they can actually get it to to come through. Yeah, and I'm actually glad that they're that they're prioritizing Xbox one games, the newer ones, you know, uh, right. That we've wanted to play at 60 for a long time. Do you think, uh, Rich, do you think there's any kind of, um, friction that they're seeing with getting, like everyone's asking for red dead redemption two to get FPS boost because uh, right now, rockstar doesn't talk about, you know, doing a full next gen enhancement. And if they did, they would charge us 60 bucks for it. Of course. Do you think there's some friction there? Like there's big games like red dead two and probably some others you can think of that should be, boosted what do you think's going on behind the scenes that no one wants to talk about i this is obviously pure speculation but i could see uh uh rockstar um not wanting them because look red dead redemption 2 and the xbox one x and i own it on the pc too but it's still a really gorgeous game on the xbox one x you put mm-hmm. fbs boost on that whether it be 60 or 120 that's really that's all you have to do and call it a day so i can picture a rock star being like yeah d- don't do that don't do that because we want to just call it a remastered edition and we'll, and we'll make yeah okay we'll do a little bit of polishing but it's really not that big of a deal and if you just gave people fps boost they wouldn't care so i could see there being some kind of conflict where rock stars like yeah no don't flip that switch we need to make money going on behind the scenes yeah, that's kind of a that's a rough thing because if you're on PC, you just get to you buy better hardware and you make that choice yourself. Mm-hmm. That's what I talked about how developers just locked and tailor made the game, packed it into a little bow, and and said that's how it is. And uh, Xbox is doing that magic. Uh, a couple games have to drop resolution. Uh, Far Cry Five does not look great at all. Like that game was really sharp looking, but ran at thirty FPS boost. It, it's off by default because it's really jaggy. I don't know if you loaded that one up, but I looked at the uh, center line stripe because I walked on the high uh, the roadway. It was like it looked like a lightning bolt uh, <laughs> stair stepped. I was like, oh, it's too bad. That game looked really great. Yeah, but, well, they uh, do that. They do that with uh, Titanfall too as well. It still looks good enough. I was playing it on my LG B9. Um, where when you have FPS boost to get the 120, it runs it at the original Xbox One resolution. So it could get a little chunky looking, but I still rather play it like that than play it at 4K60. So you can feel the difference between the almighty 60 and the ultimate 120 FPS. Absolutely. You feel right in the controller. Like you see your character move. It just responds quicker because as soon as you hit a button, you see it decreases lag. 
So yeah. even in even in our advanced years, <laughs> you can tell the difference. <laughs> yeah, those old men, man. We don't have those reflexes anymore. No MLG for any of us, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we need those extra frames to compensate for yes. our uh, aching bones. Yeah, that's great. I think it's really cool. Um, it, I, it was pretty amazing that that people are like, where are these where are those FPS boosts? And they put out five, and then they're like, where's more? And they put out twelve, and then the, they just dropped seventy four of them uh, mm -hmm. last week. And I went on and installed like eight games. So that's pretty cool. So uh, what? there's a, a little leak we can talk about. Uh, it's so fun talking about something that's never even materialized. But there is uh, a little bit of leakage going on for Starfield, a game we've never seen, game we don't know hardly anything about. Just hope it's not No Man's Sky. Jeff, what is, what's, what's the leakation with uh, uh, Starfield? Yeah, what do you know? Come on, so, spill it. Uh, okay, so no, my stuff, uh, I try to keep my stuff separate from like the other leaks because it's hard to, it, it can cause noise in my reporting. So usually when there's like leaks, I try to ignore them. So if there's like a new like screenshot or something, usually I don't look at them because I don't want it to um, inform when I go to like write a story. If I feel like I'm even subconsciously basing off on one of those things and making mm -hmm. assumptions, it can blow back in my face because I'm, I'm claiming it's coming from my own source and stuff like that. So I got to be careful. Uh, but yeah. what I've heard is um, it continues to be that they're trying to get the game ready for uh, showing a D3 and that that's still kind of the tentative plan. And uh, and also, it sounds like it could still come out this year. Uh, and I think that'd be great. I think it'd be awesome for that to be a one-two punch with Halo. Um, that would be excellent. It'd be really exciting, especially coming out of E3. I think if um, they have Starfield at E3, uh, that's going to be a good showing for Xbox. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, we're getting excited about a logo at this point. But Rich, what do you know about Starfield? Like, tell us what you know or what you've heard. Like, what leaks are going around that are uh, that you probably don't even believe, but... And what do you think the game is? Haven't heard too much. I'm also hoping that it's not a No Man's Sky as well. It, it's just amazing how um, Bethesda, they are the king of vague. Because you really think about it, they showed, they just showed nothing but like a forest background and the Elder Scrolls Six. <laughs> like, oh, right. The same yeah. kind of with Starfield. We don't know that much about Starfield. So it'll be interesting to see and that would be a huge deal that would be a, a system mover too if they had like a one-two punch of halo infinite and starfield yeah. that they both get leaked this year that would definitely even though technically every game for microsoft in a, in a weird way is a multi-plat because it's also on pc people would still love to get that hardware to play those games especially the series s you get game pass with that it's a hell of a deal oh yeah yeah i missed a i missed a super chat so i'm sorry i can't uh, say who wrote it but they asked uh, you guys if if game pass is profitable we know the answer but let's talk about that for a second here jeff does it matter is it profitable are they are they lining their <laughs> pockets with cash i, I mean one dollar deal you know the, the only reasons it, it wouldn't it doesn't seem like it would be profitable is because they just spend so money with the, that they make from the from the service making more deals uh but to me it seems like it is something that they are um they don't care if it's profitable right now so i don't know why anyone else would necessarily care and yet it does seem be, to be like if they wanted to uh just like you know take the cash home that they're making each month uh they could take some profits each each month i just doubt that they're going to spend months uh, where uh, they could be putting that money to use and investing it back in the platform uh mm -hmm. and, and instead like just put it back into their huge bank account and, like it makes no sense to do that they literally would be wasting money because that money's just going to sit there and now now they're going to have to be like worried about like negative interest rates and taxes <laughs> that are probably going to go up and stuff like that uh they just yeah. wouldn't do that so right now it, they're trying to grow it which means spending all the money that they're going to make from it um and but the point is is that they're making a lot of money so they could spend a lot of it and make deals like get outriders exclusive and like even be even the rumors around maybe battlefield 6 like that could be yeah. a realistic rumor on, on game pass because they're making enough money to pay for that sort of thing. So, um, yeah, it, 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 it really does. It's not a really logical conversation right now because it does not matter to Microsoft. So they're not, they're not going to be trying to make a profit right now. And, and so when you say, if that's your, like, if that's your argument against it, you're just not even understanding the business model. Okay. Rich, do you have a, uh, an argument on that or how are you feeling about game pass? No, I, I actually agree. And even if game pass is not netting them a huge profit right now, it's kind of the same thing that Google did with YouTube. They want to build the user base. And as the user base builds, that's where the profitability will, will come from. Um, it'll be interesting to see how these kind of subscription services, whether they be just where you download the games or you have cloud gaming work in the future. My concern with all of that is 
no one's going to want to sign up for 10 different services. doesn't matter how affordable <laughs> they are. Cause when you, we, Oh, it's only $10 a month for Capcom service for EA. We do service. though. I mean, we have 12 different services like across all different entertainment, but yeah, go ahead. <laughs> but yeah, if, but if you think about it, like say, you know, every single game developer ends up wanting to have their own streaming service that, and that'll end up being expensive. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it'll be interesting to see how that works out too. But the thing right now is that I don't think anyone can deny that Xbox Game Pass Ultimate especially offers one hell of a value. Um, I know I sound like I'm a salesman and people think that I hate, <laughs> even though I say all the damn time, the one console I would get if I can only choose one would have been a PS5. But, you know, I, right now what microsoft's bundling together with xbox game pass i don't think anyone can disagree is superior to what sony's offering right now so yeah, yeah you you shook the tree pretty hard about eight months ago or so when you said uh going in walking into a GameStop and getting a series s for i think it was when the series s was announced you said walking into a GameStop and getting a 300 dollar xbox plus a ten dollar subscription to game pass that comes with like 300 games that's a that's game over that's like a that's a no-brainer i think the words you said yeah and i remember i shared that out because like wow that's super powerful not a lot of people say that about the the impact that has yeah and, and people get angry and, it, and it's not me taking a side but it's just kind of common sense and factual when you have a company that offers you a console with next gen features granted like i said i have my concerns about the series s's longevity unless fidelity mm -hmm. fx is that much of a game changer you just what you get with the series s and game pass from just numbers you can't beat right now even on the pc side of things granted like i said games can be cheaper on pc but if you're getting game pass in a series s it's 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 a tough sell to tell to say that another platform per dollar is a, a better deal at the moment right are, are you worried about phil spencer's uh wallet with game pass are you uh, you know concerned for his his uh financial welfare <laughs> no i i think he's sleeping just well at night i i I, th I think he has probably a decent amount of zeros in his bank account so he'll be okay yeah you know i i've been telling people that uh, game pass is basically like a console it's a vehicle to sell to a customer to get a customer in the ecosystem uh, Xbox doesn't expect to make any money or big money on selling you a console. They want you there in the ecosystem and they want to provide you something to buy and enjoy and stay there and be happy there. And I think that's what Game Pass does. It gets you in cheap, 10 to 15 bucks. You get 300 some games and a bunch of them are highly rated. Now I sound like a salesman, but yeah, that, I mean, I buy them for my kids. My kids are sharing an, an Xbox Game Pass Ultimate uh, account. They love it. They couldn't believe it when I got them all set up. But, um, yeah, it's a big deal. It's just it's it's like a console. It's there to get you in there. They don't need to make money off it. So they're gonna make money everywhere else. Like Jeff said, they don't need to worry about uh, where they're putting that money uh, because the money is coming elsewhere. So, yeah. Uh, let's see here. <laughs> it's a trillion dollar company. They have money to burn. Yes. Yep. Yeah. yeah I, but I, I think the the bottom line is is that even if you just don't count all that extra money from Microsoft. They're that they are making enough money from Game Pass to make these deals. They are paying for the deals that they're making with Game Pass subscription dollars, and so obviously the business is working. Yeah, and there's a there's a momentum that you guys have probably kept an eye on. That every two weeks they've got a big announcement, yeah. so it keeps you. It's not like every month it's like, oh, should I renew? Oh, cool, there's an announcement. There's momentum that keeps your you in mind that you. And it's stay not like, like it wasn't like the summer of Xbox announcements they announced last year. Like once a month, we're gonna have something for you. So everyone <laughs> starts building didn't. up in their in their head <laughs> about what it's gonna be. Instead, they're just quietly hitting you with news on a really regular cadence in a way that says hey we know we don't have a ton of big exclusive games right now uh but we are going to tell you all, uh, about the platform while we're while we're making those games we're going to give you all these reasons to feel good about the money you spent on this system or or the money that you plan to spend on this system and it's working it's clearly working mm -hmm. to the point where people feel really good about buying an xbox right now and Microsoft's in a position with Xbox Game Pass because it's like the most promising service like it right now that they could become the Netflix of games where yes. third party devs go under Game Pass to have their game be released. And they're already kind of doing that now, you know, and that's a big deal because once a company, whether it be Microsoft, NVIDIA, Sony could still do it becomes that netflix of where everyone releases their games digitally to go to it's over mm -hmm. at that point they're like the youtube of gaming you know or mm -hmm. netflix of gaming so it's interesting yeah. to see what will happen with that uh ghetto smurf says are we still getting updates for forza horizon 4 i'll answer this one since i'm 
a huge nut for Forza Horizon. Is it realistic for five to come out this year? Tequila and driving can't wait. Uh, I don't. I don't know if we might see one car pack. I think they're pretty much done with that. They they do. Uh, there's actually updates that go on in Forza Horizon Four that you don't see if you don't log in every week like I do. I'm on there every week when the season changes to do a set of like five or six races, and then uh, while well, I'm talking to a friend, and then I go on. But uh, Jeff, we're going to see Forza Horizon Five in your prediction this yes. this year. Yes, yes. Uh, I, th- I think um, the timing makes sense. The the uh, circumstantial evidence makes sense. And also, I've heard that we'll, we'll see it. So, yes, yeah. Um, Rich, do you I, play this game? I've played some of it. It is gorgeous. Yeah, it's, it's, it is it's a gorgeous, gorgeous game. Yeah. I want to play more of it. I, I've wanted to play. I've always wanted it. You know what's weird? Here, as you guys get older, as you know this too, there's series of games that you want to play. You mm-hmm. buy them day one, which I did with Forza, and then the next thing you know, it's a year later, and you haven't taken the, even the damn cellophane off a game. Has it happened to you, or is that just <laughs> me? Buy, yeah, nope, no, I buy everything digital. <laughs> okay, so well, the digital cellophane then, but yes, yeah, my I, digital yeah. cellophane. Yes, so that's yeah. me. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah this it, game is, is ready to play. I'm like, oh yeah, uh, okay. Uh, let's see who was it. I, there was another super chat that asked Jeff about uh, Pucci said, Jeff, what's going on with Hellblade two? Yeah, that's a, that's uh, a quick answer. Yeah, I think we're. I think we are going to see it at E3. Uh, but w- like, what form that'll take, I don't know. I bet we see another cinematic trailer, maybe some gameplay, probably something along the lines of, "Hey, we are moving to to UE5. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about the tech of this game. Uh, let's show it off even more." Uh, I, I suppose they'll probably will ha- we'll have something pretty cinematic to go along with that as well. But um, th- that's. I just know that it'll probably be there. Yeah. Well, that kind of brings us into our last big topic, which is uh, E3, which is coming up faster than any of us are ready for. Yeah, uh, yeah. There haven't been a lot of, really, no leaks. Really. Uh, I know we've hear, heard little Good. things. And I, yeah, yeah, isn't that nice? So, Rich, lead us on what's going on with E3 and what you think we might see. I'm sure it is going to be just an online only event, which I'm okay with. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it's kind of common sense at this point that it would be. Um in a way, I'm actually excited that we're, I, I think because the industry isn't as interconnected due to COVID, we're not getting as many leaks. And that was, was in a way, kind of like, it's like when you were a kid at Christmas, you want the surprises to be surprises. And how many times for the past few years, and I think especially uh, Jeff, you could ve- 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 vouch for this, that you know everything before you go to an E3. Maybe there's one or two bombs that get dropped, but a lot of times those bombs are duds. So I'm happy. I'm looking forward to an E3 where I'm actually surprised. So please, all Sony, Microsoft, Nintendo, surprise me. Yeah. Uh, what do you I, want to be surprised with, Rich, before we move to Jeff? I would like to see um, something next gen from both Sony and Microsoft, not something cross gen. I know I would love to see more about the new God of War. I mean, it's Ragnarok. I would like to see that. I would like to see more Halo Infinite. I want to see what they've done to the engine. I don't want to just see still images. I want to see some gameplay. Um, those would be really just the two key things at this point that I want to see. Okay. Jeff, what do you have? What's in your crystal ball? Yeah, I, I think with one of the leaks reasons, in it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, I think one of the reasons we, we don't, are getting a lot of leaks right now is because these companies can take a little bit more time before actually nailing down what they're going to do. So, uh, you know, when you have to ship a bunch of people and objects to Los Angeles every year. You got to get those things nailed down early in the year. Like the, the planning starts in January, but really you've made a lot of decisions by like March and in April you are get, you're ordering the truck to come and start taking stuff to to LA. Um, yeah. and, and so in this situation, when they're going to be able to do it all online, they can wait to the last minute and say, is that game actually ready? If, if it is, let's do it. And we could surprise people with it. Um, and I, I think that's great. I think that's one of the benefits of, of this digital uh, sh- showcase. Um, a- as for what to expect, um, I, I think everyone's going to have a pretty good show. I think um, I, I know we're still dealing with COVID and, and that's real. I think the biggest issues right now are, are QA. Um, I think quality assurance is really holding up Nintendo games. I still, my, my, my pet theory there is Nintendo can like QA one major game at a time, really. Uh, mm-hmm. And so that's why it's got games sitting finished that they're waiting to like actually get that final QA pass on. Um, 
And, and so, but we, even with that in mind, I imagine that all these companies are going to have a lot of games that they have been holding back for quite some time that they really figured out how to get finished in the last year. And uh, we're, we're going to see them. It's going to be a, a good show. And I, for me, I think when it comes to Microsoft, if it does have, uh, you know, if, if Halo is good, Halo looks good, and then Forza Horizon 5 and Starfield, and then you throw in a bunch of stuff like more Hellblade 2 gameplay and stuff in, in, in between, that's a strong showcase. I'll be really happy. I, you know, I love Bethesda games, so Starfield alone is going to be pretty good for me. Uh, and then I just want to hear about Zelda from, from Nintendo, and I'll be, I'll be set. And one thing I forgot to thank you to the audience for reminding me that usually I don't shut up about anyway. I would love to see even a hint of something for a like a upgraded Switch. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. 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 So I don't think we'll talk about that at E3. I don't think they will. They, think they normally do that outside of E3 and like mm -hmm. two months before they launch. But I agree. I would love to hear it. Yeah, me Nintendo too. can announce that whenever they want. It'll be the best time. Yeah. Uh, well, where's where's PlayStation? Uh, I actually think it's a big deal that they're not uh, just saying, you know what? We weren't planning on being at E3, but we'll put something together and we'll uh, <clears throat> we'll join in. We'll join in with everybody else. Um, I, I kind of think that's sort of bad optics. Uh, PlayStation is one of the main leaders, and uh, them saying they'll do their show on their own, which we expect. Uh, I think they should be there at the show. Even what do you guys think? Does that I no? I, 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 I said that when they originally like le like left E three. I was like, I I think it's good when these companies come to compete. I think it brings out the best in them, and I still think that's all true. Um, and I think Sony doesn't care uh about that. And uh, we all of these companies can command their own day. That's always the argument. These companies, sure. why would they want to compete? Why would they want to uh, you know, try to share a day with someone else when they could just own the news cycle for a day? And I think people overestimate what owning the news point. cycle uh, it, it means um, on like any uh, any day of the year, as opposed to um, coming in and having a big E3 when everyone is paying attention and everyone's brother is paying attention. And, and you're like, you know, your your mom asks you, I heard of something about the news about <laughs> some, some new game at E3. And it's like, that is like a, a, the, a really kind of a Super Bowl. People call it Gamer Christmas, but it really feels like sort of gaming Super Bowl where mm -hmm. it just gets more media attention than any other time. Um, and uh, but Sony it, it doesn't want to pay the money to be involved in that. And, and, and I think they don't want to be associated with the ESA uh, going forward. And that, you know, that's why that's is that choice? I, I, I well, I think in the future they don't want to pay the ESA dues. They don't want to. And yeah, they don't want to yeah. pay, and they don't want to pay hundreds of thousands of dollars, millions of dollars, really, to operate a booth at at, at E3 because it's, it's yeah. cheaper. And, yeah, Microsoft. And, and because yeah. Jim Ryan is 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 a guy who's like, I built this company up in Europe without uh, in E3. No one cared about E3 in Europe. I, I, we, we don't need it. I think he really thinks he doesn't need it. Um, and he's proven for the most part that he doesn't. Uh, so so I, I get that. Uh, but. I still think they'll do a showcase later in June, maybe early July. Um, and uh, especially with Ratchet coming out June 11th, right before E3, they're going to be talking about oh, that yeah. game. They're going to be saying, hey, go buy Ratchet. What do you, all these other games. We, we have the best looking game in the world right now. You can go buy it. Why do you care about E3? That's going to be their conversation for a Do you think PlayStation two. will host just before the actual E3 event or they'll go afterward? after after they're going to be they're going to be talking about they're going to be talking about Ratchet until, yeah. until like late in the month. Yeah. Uh, do you guys go to the event when it was in person? Have you ever been? I haven't. Yeah, yeah I, have I went not. from I went from 2013. I think it was my first year, and then I went to all of them until they stopped doing them. Wow. Yeah, yeah it was it was Crazy. fun. I remember being in the room when they announced the uh, you know the PS4 was going to be four hundred dollars and people losing their mind and like <laughs> oh wow this something just happened and it turned out something had just happened uh, that generation. So yeah. I think we also have to realize too that Nintendo in 2011, when they stopped doing E3s, kind of set the precedent and showed that, yep. that you don't need E3 anymore to get the word out there with how the internet is now. No, oh, yeah. um, there is, and I do, with Jeff, I do agree with you that there is a level of excitement and build that the, the e E3s looked at like a Super Bowl. But uh, when you flip the coin on the other side, Nintendo has said, "Hey, look." we don't need E3 and we're doing just fine. So I think yeah. other Sony's or other companies, other Sony's other companies looked at that and said, Hmm, maybe we could do the same thing, save yeah. money and still get the word out there. Everything's just a click away or a phone tap away now. So. And, and Nintendo still does participate in E3. Like they, they have their booth, uh, but the, for their yeah. showcase, it is yeah. just the Nintendo direct. Uh, so they're not like uh, trying to like fight for stage presence that the ESA controls or anything like that. But they're like one of the big supporters of this e digital E3. Like they're one of the first companies stepping out saying we support the ESA and we're going to be there with this digital event. That um, is true. 
but but it is them running it. I think uh, just like to speak inside baseball about E3 a little bit this year. I think that um, the ESA was trying to charge these companies a lot of money to like do basically nothing for them this year uh, just to be like part of E3. And I think all the companies revolted against that and basically said, we're going to do what Nintendo does. We're going to produce our own show. Uh, why would we pay you a bunch of money just to put E3 on it? And then ESA flipped it and said, okay, never mind. Everyone just come in. If you have something, come do it. And we, you don't have to pay us anything. We'll figure out some other way to make money. Yeah, please, uh, please. I think, I think you. that's what happened. Like a yeah. car salesman in a used lot. No, 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 no. Come yeah, on yeah, back. No, 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 no. Don't leave, don't leave, don't leave, don't leave. Yes, please. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Just sign that, here, just sign you, here. You want to get 2000 <laughs> off on the car where you're good. <laughs> exactly, yep. I don't know. I think it's something that we need. And for those that... Uh, I mean, in the grand scheme of things, you know, if you got 40,000 people that attend the event physically, you know, compared to the millions and millions that watch it online, many may not care that it ever comes back to a real event um, or who yep. is there and when, when the event is. But those who do go like that, there's an excuse for gamers to get together, you know, because let's be honest, people we work with and our family members don't care about video games, but the people that we meet at a video game convention absolutely do care. Um, I want to give a thanks to the 1500 people plus that showed up for the show. It's incredible. Uh, we've got a lot of news coming. This is my first time doing the show and to have rich, somebody who I've been watching for years on YouTube and Thank Jeff you. Grubb, who I've been reading about and had, uh, been on shows with him and uh, had some great laughs. Like uh, that is an incredible, incredible, uh, thing. But I just want to, you let me know what you've been doing, uh, when you're not chasing kids around, let let the audience know uh, what you think and what you've been playing and what has been entertaining you. Rich, go first, buddy. I actually have it's a and this is not a product. I am not sponsored by this company. I actually bought it. Everyone thinks I am because I won't shut the hell up about it. I was playing <laughs> Titanfall Two and Resident Evil Village on the INEO. It's a Switch like gaming PC and it handles both games. It's oh, wow. really freaking awesome and it looks good it's not like and it's not even just like it's like at medium settings and you're playing it in a device that looks like the switch so uh i've been doing a lot of that i also got anchor sent me out the nebula capsule 2 which is r2 it looks like r2d2 from star wars and it's a projector and it's awesome i've been working on that too not sponsored by them as well <laughs> I mean, did you, everyone, did you play everyone games on this thing? Like, everyone, everyone thinks as soon as you say you like something that you're sponsored by it. So you have to make that abundantly clear. So I'm going to, I mean, there's shortcomings to a trust me and tell you about them, but that's coming up too. So I've been playing those games on the INEO and I've been using the projector with the Series X and PlayStation 5 and gaming PC. So I'm going to be showing that off too. Are you getting uh, a 60 Hertz refresh on a projector? Yes. I've always wa wow. Yeah. And uh, what about lighting the room, like dimming the room? Is it? Not well, a big problem. I, I, in my bedroom, it, it, it's it works because I have a dark bedroom. But yeah, of course, it's that's oh, a sure it's in a dungeon, Colt. You know this. Come on. <laughs> hey, man, it's like the it's the perfect Netflix and chill. But I actually have it, it shoots onto my roof. Oh, that's cool. Or not my roof, but my ceiling. And yeah, it it's the the first one didn't hold the sixty, so it was a terrible gaming experience. This one's absolutely awesome, and. It's and you just lay on the bed and just game right on the ceiling. Resident Evil Eight on the ceiling, yes, That's it is cool. friggin' amazing. So wow, yeah. wow, that is pretty cool. Jeff, what's been going on with you? What have you been keeping yourself entertained in these yeah. quiet times I, at home? I, I, like I said, I, I, I was uh, reading that Escawada book. Uh, what I could read of it when the kids weren't jumping on on the pages and trying to destroy it. Uh, it was very good. It's it's a very good collection of. Uh, the, you know, the, the late president of Nintendo before he died, uh, he did a bunch of interviews and stuff and they wow. put put all that stuff together in a way that sounds like he wrote it, uh, but it's all his ideas, all, all the things he's expressed about running a company and, and, and about being a gamer. And, and it's just like such a, it's, it's touching and moving and really insightful and it explains it really, it gives insight to like how this company could go from the Wii to the Wii U and come back with a switch and kind of feel oh, yeah. fun that entire time. Uh, like what kind of leader could lead a company through that sort of stuff? Um, it's it's really insightful. It's great. And that book just came out uh, in English, and it's fantastic. And then I've been playing around with the, the Retroid Pocket Two. Uh, I, I like this thing quite a bit. It's um, it's got the nice four by three screen. It's got the dual sticks. But mostly I've been playing it to play like Super Mario RPG and stuff. Stuff that's not on the Switch that I wish was on the Switch. So that's and, it. Hold it up again. Yeah, the uh, Retroid Pocket Two. Yeah, it's uh, okay. it's 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 got. See, the the weird thing about this one is, you know, it's one of those Chinese handouts, right? But this one runs Android, so you can get all the emulators right off the Google Play Store, and that makes Are you it, like, sponsored, Jeff? Uh, see, uh, of course, yeah, yeah. I'm a, yeah I'm a they journalist. always think that as soon <laughs> as you like something, they think that. Yeah. Yeah. I don't talk about anything unless I'm I'm sponsored as a journalist. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, 
for, for the most part, uh, yeah, this is it's it's kind of the kind of thing where I'm like, ah, uh, I'm just interested in that. I'm gonna go out and buy this one myself. We do get sent some stuff, but this one I just kind of. How much was buy. that thing? For, it's only eighty uh, bucks. Yeah. They're, they're, they're oh, that's really, that's very these cool. these Chinese handouts. They're they're fantastic. They're, a lot of them fall apart right away. But this one seems pretty well built, and uh, I, I really like that it runs Android. Uh, that's cool because it, it's just. You know, all of those emulators are already built. Everyone wants to run these games on their phone anyhow. So there's all the work's been done. You just go out and get it. It can run up to about Dreamcast games. Um, they don't, those games don't run great. Some of them run a lot better than others, but everything before that seems to run pretty well. Uh, and yeah, a lot cool. of, a lot of people say, you know, who wants to play a game on their phone or, or on the go? It's like, uh, a lot of people do. And uh, yeah. you're just one customer. There are many other customers out there who want a different experience. I like a big OLED. That's a great time with, you know, a nice headset on. But there are other situations, other people. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the show. I hope you had fun. Uh, I really appreciate you coming on. The chat was amazing. This is, great. This is my first time. So interacting with the chat, uh, you know, i am uh, got all my hands going everywhere trying to make sure I do things. I'll, I'll work on that. It's something uh, that I'll be able to do more and more as I go on. But uh, we had over 1,500 people watching. we got 1,400 now. I've been playing Resident Evil Village. Like I said, like six FPS boost games. I loaded up that just... Uh, destroy all humans game uh actually looks pretty nice it says it's a goofy game yeah, i didn't actually play that original that was a good remaster no. though it's, it's pretty good yeah i was playing on a party chat with my buddy Fonz, who's in the chat i mean there's a whole bunch of people in the chat if i named them you guys would be uh, asking when you get your dinner break so i really appreciate you being on this has been a really great show this is Thank xbox you. newscast so it will not be a set panel i'll bring on people that are very interesting and fun to listen to like rich and jeff uh, I'll kind of cycle people in. You guys are welcome. Bring me to back come for back E3, man. Bring like. me back for E3. So, like, one of the E3 days, I'll come back. Yeah, yeah. It is good. It's going to be nuts. Like, we think about uh, how soon E3 comes, but we also fear it as content creators. We yes. have a lot of work to do. So, <laughs> yes, it's yeah, be a busy week. So, say goodbye to the chat. One more thing. Brigadiers Blue said, "Just want to say congrats to the first episode, Colt. Looking forward to my Monday nights now. Rich and Jeff couldn't have been better first guests. These guys are great, Thank and you. I get to meet you guys because of this. So, this is cool stuff." So, all right, wave goodbye, guys. This has been a good show, have and good we one. will. Uh, yeah, night, guys. Say, have a good one, and be nice, of course.